I got new studio lights. That's the big thing, right? And so it's really bright for, for everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube, and on ClayShare. It looks fabulous. This is what's happening. I am doing the kiln opening for ClayCon West, meaning everything in this kiln, well, not everything, but most everything in this kiln is going with me tomorrow to Utah, and it has to fit in that suitcase back there. That suit, this, that one right there, everything has to fit. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't ship. It can't go. It's just how it is. So I'm giving you all a sneak peek. This is my little cheat sheet for the workshop. So in here I have what I'll be teaching, what you need for supplies and materials. I have the template sizes and everything in here. Um, and I have where you can find me and get information on all this stuff. So hi everyone, hi Josie, hi. All right, let's get started. Let's do this. Let's do this, this filming thing and get this taken care of because I know you all want to see what I have in the kiln. I want to see what I have in the kiln and I still haven't packed anything else for ClayCon, meaning clothes, stuff, all, all that. I haven't packed any of that. Kiln is at mm, 106-ish and this fired, let's see, we are on Wednesday. I glazed and fired this Monday. It finished yesterday morning at about 9 a.m. And uh, it's been cooling since 9 a.m. yesterday. So since 9 a.m., it's cooled down only to 106 degrees. And that is because I have this three inch brick, this really heavy duty brick that's well insulated this kiln and it keeps it from cooling too fast. So. Yay, yay for me for having a well insulated kiln, but you gotta wait a while to get your pots out of it. All right, so let's, let's pull stuff out. Um, we're just gonna lead off with the project that I will be demoing at ClayCon. I'm gonna show how to make this sweet little darted pitcher. Those of you who are ClayShare Premium members, you all can make this already, cause it's a class, but guess what? I'm going to show you in person how to make it. So we're making this cute little thing right here. How cute is that? I love it. So we'll be doing that. What glaze is this? So on the inside is my Chun Blue. Let's see if I can get the, the lights to shine in nicely. And on the outside is Amico's Aqua Celadon. And I really love this Celadon glaze. It's beautiful. It's very close to my Chun Blue. It's not quite as blue. You can see where the two come together. Um, the pattern on it, that texture, everybody's going to ask. This is not one of my rolling pins. This is actually another company's rolling pin. I love it so much I keep using it. So there you go. So we got this. That's going to be a demo piece. What else do we have in the kiln? We have some surprises. This, this is a darted mug, again, a clay share class, but I'm going to show you how to make this. I actually made this a little fatter for my demo than in my clay share class. And on this, Laguna, this is Laguna B Mix 5. That's this clay right here. Hey, everyone coming in. So um, this is being recorded live right now. So if you're watching this on Facebook now, you're watching me live. Those of you who are tuning in on YouTube or on clay share later, you're watching a recording of the live broadcast. How's that? So what's on here? Well, the outside is Georgie's Sand and Surf Pigment. And I had a little oops with it. I shared that in my Instagram stories. I sort of spilt my whole bottle. I was able to glaze four mugs with it. And then I put Georgie's Super Clear on top. And then the inside's my Chun Blue. So this is, this is a good one. So Penny, you, wait, I gotta go back. I gotta see, so I got comments. If you're watching this as a replay, um, you can always catch it live Wednesdays and I do my kiln openings live. If you're watching on YouTube, follow me on Facebook and you can watch these live too because you get notifications. So Susan, you use that, that folk pin too. Yeah, that's a great pin. So this right here, um, Georgie's on Laguna B mix. Oh, and what is the texture? Uh, this is a rolling pin I picked up at a cake supply store or a Michael's craft store. And it's just this scale, like a fish scale. And it's great because I call this a mermaid mug because it's kind of like a mermaid. It's very cute. So this one is coming with me to ClayCon. This has got to go on that suitcase back there. 
It's got, it's got to fit in the suitcase. So this one's going. Uh, what else we got? We got some more that are going. I'm just going to show you the, the mugs that are going. I have got these right here. Again, it's the same glaze. Sand and Surf Interactive Pigment with Georgie's Super Clear on top. And inside is my Chun Blue, a very light layer of Chun Blue. And this right here. So Paul has the same scale rolling pin from Michael's. Yeah, it's a great rolling pin. And there's a question. So someone wants to know about my Chun Blue. So Chun Blue is the glaze I made and I developed. You can get it from clayscapespottery.com. So you can buy it there. The recipe I cannot give out anymore because I have an agreement with Clayscapes because they make it for me. But I will say, um, if you were watching my how to make glazes class, you might learn that recipe because that could be the recipe I use to teach you how to make glazes. And the super clear is not zinc free, Judy, no. So what makes this react so well with these pigments is the fact that there is zinc in that clear and that gives you that effect. So these two mugs are going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them back here. So these two are going in the suitcase. They gotta fit. If it doesn't fit, it's not going. That's just how it is. Uh, I got a couple more that I did. These are a little smaller. So I tried to glaze in pairs, not expecting that people are gonna buy pairs of mugs, but just because it seems like a nice thing to do. This is Amico's Aqua Celadon on top of Laguna B Mix. And then the tippy top is just a lovely coat of Art Deco Green, also from Amico, and a very light coating of my Chun on the inside. The suitcase is handy. That bright colored suitcase, you see that coming. You don't lose that suitcase. So wait, I got a question from Clayshare. What clay would I use for an outdoor project, a yard gnome? Well, if you live somewhere where it freezes, you don't want to leave your ceramics outside because water will get in and crack. So outdoors, as long as you have, live in a place that doesn't freeze, you should be okay. With most clays, a lot of people, um, like terracotta for outdoor sculpture. I like something that's really groggy, something that um, is, is a clay that can hold up to sculptural use. And if you glaze it, that'll help keep water out. It's just if any water gets into any crack or crevice and freezes, it will expand as it freezes and that expansion will cause your ceramics to crack. And I, I don't want that to happen. How many coats of Art Deco Green, Charlotte wants to know? Two, honey. On the rim of this, two coats on the rim, three coats of aqua celadon on the rest of the piece, and two coats of the Art Deco green on the top. And again, this um, design, I don't think I said, is my lattice trellis rolling pin, right? That's this one. Lattice scroll, maybe? Maybe it's lattice scroll. I can't even remember the names of my own pins. That's, that's terrible. Uh, I got a refire. This, this is what happens. So, so if it freezes, you can use standard ceramics 420. Yeah, but Drew, the problem with, you know, if you have water built up in a crevice and it freezes and then that water expands, it'll crack. So it doesn't, you got to be careful. You really do. This is my cobblestone, but the top I dick dipped in my spearmint and it was way thin. So if you're getting yellow for my spearmint, that is because, that is because it's too thin. So this I'm gonna reglaze with the spearmint on the inside and on the rim. So this is not coming. This is not going to ClayCon. This is staying in Vermont and it will get refired next time. So that's one mug down. So all the mugs I made to take if you plan to get a mug, there's one less option. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can, it's just, it's just how it works out sometimes. Cobblestone is a glaze, Karen. It's, it's one of my own glazes that will be coming out through Clayscapes Pottery later this year. I have to do something about that light. It is killing me. Is that better? Is that better? No. I'm like blinded here. We'll, we'll just put the mugs, we'll put the mug up, that helps. 
you like them you like the mug as is there's nothing wrong with it except it's thin so I have to decide if I'm gonna bring it or not here's the thing all right so Susan says she just mixed up my spearmint if it's coming out yellow it's too thin uh, there's nothing wrong with it yellow it's just not intended so cobblestone is a satin matte yes it is yes it is my my glaze here is two more of those mugs with the snowflakes on one side and my mom likes the yellow thanks mom and then again on the little scrolly this is the georgie's sand and surf with the georgie super clear on top and again my chun blue inside on the rim do i do anything to refire a mug i don't i just put the glaze on and that's it i go that's how i refire I, I put a second coat of glaze and then i fire it although a lot of people will do um a little spray starch are those wheel thrown oh no they're all hand built no 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 these these right here these are hand these are not wheel thrown no these are hand built mugs um they're just you know the mugs i i hand build from a slab this was a slab of clay and you should i should take it you'd buy it well maybe i will maybe somebody will fall in love with it so this is my um the shape comes from my making a sweater mug class it's just you can put any texture any texture you want on it and then here's one of my little did i fire any of the chocolate yet no michelle all the chocolate is still covered in plastic drying the chocolate she means the chocolate clay not chocolate like a hershey's bar and I have a bunch of carved mugs that are also drying. They didn't make it in time. A huge uh, lesson for me when you think things are gonna be ready in time, and sometimes you can work as hard as you can in ceramics, but what happens is clay dries the way it has to dry, and it wasn't ready. So the, the chocolate didn't get fired, and the carved pieces are not fired. They're not gonna make it. But this matches my, my top, so we can talk about this mug. <laughs> So a little bit the same thickness. So all, my mugs are the same thickness all the way because I, I rolled them out with a slab roller, but they, they feel good. So this is a little hand-built mug, kind of in the traditional diner style. The pattern on this is, again, that lattice. So Judy uses hairspray or white glue to help glaze it here for a refire. You can totally do that. I, I've not done it, not because it doesn't work. I just haven't found a problem with it not sticking. All right, I got a couple things I'm gonna show you super fast, but not a lot because these are classes I haven't filmed yet for Clay Share. These are, these are things I'm gonna film super soon. Well, when I get home from ClayCon, but um, I can't, I can't. There they are, check them out, ooh. Isn't that gorgeous? Aren't they great? That's it. That's all you get. That's, that's, that's it. We will talk about those when I get back from ClayCon. Um, someone wants to know, oh, the mugs. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm a horrible person. Look at me. I just walk off and not tell you what glaze this was. Ah, excuse me. I will tell you what glaze this is. This is Smoky Merlot from Amico. And then on the rim is Iron Luster, and on the inside is my Lake Blue. And that's a blue glaze that uh, will be available at Clayscapes later this year as well. So you can do, you can um, make this mug, and you can glaze it like that. You just can't get the blue yet, soon. Someone asked, how, are you, how do you get my mugs at ClayCon? So this is the way it works. I will be a main demonstrator, so I'll be demonstrating. I'm not selling my mugs. I turn them over to Clay Con, and they have them in their booth, and it's just when they're gone, they're gone. I don't sell them myself. So I have no control over who buys them. I don't get to hold any back. I don't get to play favorites. It's they're in the booth, and that's it. And this one is going as a gift for somebody, and I'm not saying who, but it's going. So because the person it's going to doesn't even know they're getting it. Sneak peek drive-by, exactly. I'm, I got another, I've got, I've got like three or four in here that are sneak peeks for future classes. And, oh, there's, there's more classes right there. 
<laughs> There's some glasses right here. All right, let's show this. This is part of a new class. This is all I'm going to show you. I'll just, I'll come really close. I'm going to hold it funny so you can't figure out what it is. This is indigo pigment, right, with their uh, zinc-free clear. And then I used wormwood on the back. No, I used tree bark. Tree bark on the back. That's it. We can't talk about this anymore. Except to say that, wait, 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 wait. Except to say this goes in the garden. Oh, that's it. That's all you get. That's it. And then um, these are a future class. And how thick do I roll out my slabs when making cups? So Connie, a little thicker than a quarter of an inch. And then by the time I flatten them down with a rib and add my texture, they're, they're a little thinner. And then they shrink in the firing. So you got that going on. Um, I'm going to show you the glaze and I won't tell you what they are. This is Mako's Lavender Mist with Dark Flux. Oh, yummy day, right? And then this is my spearmint with my Lake Blue. And this is how the spearmint should turn out. This is how my spearmint should look. So if you are making my spearmint and it's not coming out like this beautiful spearmint color, then it's too thin or too thick. And then that blue again will be available from Clayscapes. And then there's that lavender mist. All right, so these are a class you probably could guess, but um, so that's three. That's three classes. And I have to say, I wanted, I wanted to film them before I left, but the only way I could film any of those classes is if I don't pack clothes. Like I could say, oh, well, I'll just wear this outfit for 10 days straight all over the American West while I'm out there for ClayCon and then going to the Grand Canyon and Sedona and Vegas. I'll just wear one outfit, right? I mean, who needs to pack clothes? I don't need to pack clothes. So I could do that, um, film the class and not bring clothes. No, I'm gonna pack clothes. You know what they are, but you won't say. You made some, Josie made some at Christmas. Shh, Josie, don't, 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 shh. I made those ages ago. They've been sitting in the studio for way too long. I meant to get them fired. I have been crazy busy, but we're not, we're not gonna talk about it. <clears throat> Ooh, I have other things too. Oh, I can't show you any of this. <laughs> Just do as the locals, one or two outfits. Um, yeah, I mean, really, I'm gonna bring like a couple pairs of jeans and a couple tops and, and that's it, I'm good. I'm not a heavy packer. This is another future class, but I can't show any of it. I can't show it, it's going. All right, that was the fourth one out. The rest I can show you. Okay, now, pack clothes. <laughs> Sandy's like, please pack your clothes. I'll bring clothes. Oh, I'm also bringing a clay share pin for premium members who come. You guys, all of my clay share premium members will get a little enamel pin. Um, oh, someone, wait, someone just said, my iPad had a problem right when you said how thick my slabs are. About a quarter of an inch, Kathleen, a little thicker, honestly, when I'm rolling them out. And then by the time I smooth them out and add my texture, it's a, it's a little thinner than a quarter of an inch. Um, the ratio for water to pounds of spearmint glaze, Robin, ask Clayscapes Pottery. And I say that because I make mine in my studio a different way because I don't measure the amount of water. I just pour the water in, mix it up, and do a finger dip. I know. And I make five gallons at a time. So I am like the worst person to ask that question of, even though it's my glaze. Um, I am so sick of that light. I might have to just do something about it. It's making me crazy. Okay, so we have got some really cute trinket dishes. And this is indigo right here. This is indigo pigment from Georgie's. And on top is their... Um, let me think for a second. This is their super clear. Nope, zinc free clear, zinc free. Sorry, took me a minute. Look how gorgeous that is. Yes, I will save you a pin for April, Judy. Yes, I will save you a pin. So that's what this is, the indigo pigment with the zinc free clear. 
It's gorgeous. I made little trinket dishes with them. Turned out super cute. And then, okay, who's going to ClayCon? And who's a ClayShare member? And who's doing the magnet exchange? Because I have got about 50 five zero magnets. You're getting to see the official clay share magnet for ClayCon West right here. It's not a cupcake. It is a cute little cactus in a pot. But after I made it, um, I was like, Ooh, they look like cupcakes or ice cream cones. <laughs> Sydney, you're getting one. So everybody who's going is getting one. I have to, I have to epoxy magnets on, on the back of these later. That's what I'm doing. After this bra, after I finish this, I will be doing that. Um, more things for that super secret surprise class. Right here. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Don't try to hold beads when you are trying. Oh, thank goodness they didn't break. Whew. Whew. I thought I broke them. Thank goodness. This is what happens when you make beads and you drop them. Don't do that. So I've got some clay beads and do 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 a little sculpted bird. That's part of a that's part of one of the classes. Whew. That that's a little crazy there. <laughs> you got your magnets. They're in the kiln 5 minutes ago. <laughs> little wine bottle topper. <laughs> yeah, um, so those of you who think that I don't drop stuff and break stuff, guess what? I'm a klutz. I break stuff all the time. I am terrible, 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 terrible. I drop stuff, I break stuff, I spill stuff. Um, I'm a person. I just make a mess. What can I say? This so cute plate. This is sand and surf pigment with the super clear. That's what that is. It came out really pretty and look, it matches. It matches a mug. Maybe if I go that way. Beads usually don't break because they're round and they roll. That's a good thing because if they did break, I would be in trouble. So I showed how to make this plate in one of my little like quickie videos I put up on Facebook. And I had a bunch of people who were really down on me about, well, that's great. Nobody ever shows how it looks when it's done. And I'm like, it's got to go in the kiln. I can't show you what it looks like until it's done. Like I would love to magic fast forward, but you got to wait. So now it's done. And there you can see it. It turned out very nice. I'm really happy with that plate. Uh, that would be the fancy, fancy rim plates, I think we're calling it. I'm calling it a fancy rim plate. Oh, we've got more tests. All right. This is, everybody has commented about how their autumn foliage has been working out for their glaze. This is autumn foliage with one coat of eggshell wash, just one very thin coat. So if you want to see what eggshell wash looks like with one thin coat of autumn foliage pigment underneath, that's your chance right there. And then this is again the sand and surf pigment with the super clear on this little plate. So there's two, two Georgie's pigments options. Yeah, so um, I noticed a bunch of people were commenting they're having problems with their autumn foliage pigment and the eggshell wash. One coat gives a nice warm brown sort of vintage feel. Two coats, it goes a little greener. <laughs> which one to get? I mean, I'll do what I did, Kathleen. I got the sample kit, which has all of them to try. And then you pick the... Then you buy pints of the bigger sizes when you know what you like, right? That's my suggestion. Get the sample kit. And if you're going to do that, let Georgie's know you are a ClayShare member. Call them to place your order and they'll help you do a flat rate shipping. So you can save on your shipping charges if you do it that way. Some more ClayShare magnets. 
coming out of the kiln. And then this was from my making a test tile board. This is the little test tile. That is tree bark with perfect white on it. And what I have is I have the tree bark on the bottom, not wiped back, on the top wiped back, one coat of perfect white on this half and two coats on this half. So if you watched that class and you wanted to see what that turned out, there you go. You get to see it. And honestly, I think not wiped back is really cool. And I think only one coat of that perfect white is all you need. More than that, it becomes very opaque. So uh, that super secret class that I, can't, that I can't tell you about, this is part of it. But again, what I want to give you is the close-up so you can see this finish. This is indigo with the zinc-free clear. And then on the back is tree bark, wiped back, but no glaze. So it's a nice just way to finish the bottom of a piece. So there's this. And you're, you're probably guessing what it is. But you got to have patience. Because I can't, I can't film that class till I get back. Gotta wait. Ah, the bread! Do y'all remember the bread plate we made in one of my broadcasts a few week ago, weeks ago? Hmm, I remember. Ooh, and the lace doily one. Oh, I'm so happy it's done! Okay, all right. We're just gonna pull them both out because it's winner, winner, chicken dinner time here, folks. The indigo and you haven't used it, you should use it because BAMO! Hello! Hi! Do I have a new favorite pigment? I think I might. This is, wait, bread too. The bread plate. I had to show this. So let's talk about this first. This is Georgie's indigo pigment with the zinc free clear on it. Look at that. Oh, yummy. Yum. So good. So good. Just clear on the back. So it's a zinc free clear. No zinc. I know. That was this Battenberg lace that I used. <gasps> I love it. I love it. Yeah, that came out. That's a winner. And then um, some of you have, after I showed this, how to make the bread, um, plate. I know. I'm just going to hold them both up while I talk because I don't think there's, I think that this is so awesome. So the bread doily, people were saying that the word, the letters in the bread don't look like you can see them, but I want you to go ahead and fire them and glaze them because I think they pop back out after. I think they will. I think they'll pop back out. It's like stained glass. Paul, you nailed it. Paul has the best comment on this lace platter, like stained glass. I love you. I love this. Oh my gosh, I love this. Ah, I, ha I, might, I might be keeping that one. I'm just, I might keep that one and make more. All right, so I have, don't, don't drop them. <laughs> I have a ton of magnets, more, oh. Did I tell you what colors I used on the magnets? No, no, I didn't. Okay, so let me show you. This right here is Laguna B Mix. This is Amico's Tangelo, Georgie's Sea Foam, and Georgie's Cherry Fizz. And then I did another one that didn't have texture on the little pot. And this is top to bottom, Cherry Fizz, Georgie's Sea Foam, and then the bottom is Amico's Albany Slip Brown. It is two coats of the Zinc Free Clear. Two coats on that platter. So this here, let me show you. It's two, two good coats. Two good solid coats. You can see how shiny that is. That's because there's two good coats. The Indigo is amazing. It's so good. I wish I had known before I did these mugs because I would have glazed those mugs with that indigo. Oh my goodness. I think it's stolen my heart. I think so. It's pretty amazing. 
Wow. You know, I fire a lot of pots and I've seen a lot of glazes over the years and that turned out better than I expected. I, so I'll tell you what, the bigger one is in here and I glazed that a different way and I did the indigo on the smaller one. I didn't, the smaller one's good, but the bigger one I thought was better. So I did the glaze I thought would look nicer on the big one and the smaller one was kind of like, meh, whatever glaze I got is fine. So I went with the indigo and now I'm like, oh, I wish I had done the big one with indigo. I mean, I can make another one, right? It's all good. Yeah, these are Georgie's Interactive Pigments. That's, that's what that indigo is. It's a pigment, which is basically a bunch of different oxides, which I think I showed last week. Um, and so you can put them on, you wipe them back, and then you put a glaze on top. And I did a test tile board showing all of them. It's actually right there behind me. And I'll grab it in a second and bring it up to the front. But that's a class on clay share that you can go watch. And I actually use every single one of Georgie's pigments. And I test eggshell wash, super clear, zinc free clear, uh, my chun blue and their translucent satin on all of their pigments so you can see what they'll look like. More magnets. And there's still more coming. There's so many magnets. And then we have a few more mugs. And that's it. Then the kiln opening's over. It's done. So I'm loving, Dwayne, the kiln, it still looks brand new. Like when you look at it from the front, the kiln is still shiny. I still love this kiln. Uh, I have wanted a kiln like this um, for a couple of years now. There are many reasons that I went with this kiln and I do not regret it at all. I absolutely adore it. It's the best kiln I've ever had. I mean, my gas kiln out back, my big 16 cubic foot gas kiln, that's a great kiln, but it's manual and it's gas. It's a whole different creature. This little guy, oh my gosh, it's so good. I love it. And if you're wondering what it is, it's an L and L kiln. And I have the E23T and it has a three inch brick. Okay, a couple more mugs coming out, destined for ClayCon. The clay master. <laughs> so this is what the indigo pigment looks like after it's wiped back on B-Mix. Exactly. So the blue, the whole thing was wiped back, but some of it settles into recessed areas. So I've got two mugs with the autumn foliage and the eggshell wash. So I can switch that up and you can see how that turned out. And then a light layer of my chun on the inside. So these are some sweet little mugs. They'll be going to clay con. Let me grab this platter and we'll talk more about this. All right. So I have shown you all how to make plates with lace many, many times. This was a slab I pressed lace into and peeled the lace off. And then what happens is it creates raised texture and recessed texture. And when I apply a pigment or a stain, it goes into the whole, the recessed areas and you wipe back. And what ends up happening is when you wipe back the surface, the areas that are recessed will hold more pigment. And that's why we have darker stained areas. So the darker areas are the recessed areas. The lighter areas are the raised areas. And this is Georgie's indigo pigment. Yes, it is. And it's fabulous. I'm going to keep this up here because it's big sister is the one that I thought I would love the most. Now, don't get me wrong. This is, this isn't a bad one. This, this isn't bad. This is gorgeous. This is Georgie's eggshell wash glaze on top of Georgie's uh, autumn foliage pigment. So you can see how the, this looks. Now I made them at the, I made it at, on a live, I made this on a live broadcast. Yes, I did. So I made these together. Actually, if I hold it like this, look, you can see the lace continues because it's a big lace um, like table topper that I used. But you can see the different looks you'll get. You know, here we have the Georgie's eggshell wash with the autumn foliage. And then here is 
the indigo with the zinc free clear. So you get two different options. Penny, this was the rounded rectangle GR pottery form set of three. So I have all three of them. This is the smallest in the set. This is the medium. So you could, I don't want to, I don't want to make too much noise, but you know, you can stack them all up. If you glaze them all the same way, how cute would that be? Having a set of these, right? And the indigo, I am, so these I'm not bringing with me to clay con because they, they can't, I can't put these in the luggage. They'll take up too much space with bubble. So these are staying home, but mugs are going. Um, I don't think I'm gonna bring the trays. I just think it'll be too hard to get the trays in there. And then the last mug. So Arlita, these are brush, those were brush on, yes, yeah. This right here is the last mug I have in the kiln. And this is Mako's Lavender Mist with their dark flux on top. So three coats of Lavender Mist, actually it's two and a half coats of Lavender Mist. So you can do two thicker coats or three thin coats, but it's, it's not a heavy, heavy coat. And then the, the flux is two coats and then my lake blue on the inside. Maybe they should move clay con to my studio, right? And then you all could just come and get all the pots and then I don't have to sh bring them, schlep them across the country, right? So the Mako glazes is always very, very pretty. I'm always very happy with the way they turn out. Um, they're very reliable. I would like to say very reliable glazes. So what else do we have in here? I've got a few more magnets and that's it. The rest of my evening is packing up for clay con and gluing magnets up. You see your name on that one. <laughs> so let me tell you, the Dark Flux is Mako also. Let me tell you the magnets I use because people always want to know. So when you make a magnet, you can make a magnet from anything. Anything you roll out a slab of clay, you use a cookie cutter, whatever you want to do, and you get this nice flat little shape like this, you're going to want to stick a magnet. Well, I use these magnets right here. I got them on Amazon. It is 99 pieces of magnets. That's what it says on the package. I'm not making that up. 99 pieces of round ceramic magnets. And um, I can share their four millimeter is the size that I use. That's good for these right here. And to epoxy, to epoxy, I use E6000. That's my favorite epoxy, which is just a really great general purpose epoxy for ceramics. And am I doing a prime broadcast? I am, and we're gonna glue magnets. So if you're coming to prime broadcast tonight, it's gonna be me uh, gluing magnets and getting my tools together and packing pots for my trip. So that's what's happening. It's not exciting. It's just me packing everything up. So there we have it. Um, what do I think was the best pot? You know how I like to like to play that game. Um, I'm gonna say, oh, you know what it is. I, I don't even think, I don't even know if I had to go back there and get it. Uh, Charlotte, it is a cookie cutter for my magnets. Yes, it is. It's a little cactus cookie cutter. Uh, I found it on Amazon. Just look up cactus cookie cutters. It's so cute. Oh my gosh, I just adore it. And it's, I wanted to write clay share, but <clears throat> I ran out of time. So it is what it is. Okay, so this right here, this is my favorite thing from the firing, this piece. I love it, I love it. It's so good, it's the best, it's awesome. Try. Try using indigo pigment with zinc free clear. So that's, that's what I got. All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out here with me live. Next week, I will be in Sedona. I will be at the Grand Canyon on Monday, Tuesday. Sedona, Wednesday, Thursday, back to Vegas on Friday. Home, midnight, Saturday. So I won't be doing live at five next week. And um, Linda, if you are in the Prime group, You'll get to see it there. That's where it is. All the info on how to join the Prime group is on clayshare.com. Just go under 
your um, account. You just log in there and you'll see how to join it. We are also broadcasting on the clayshare.com website so you can watch the Prime broadcast there. So you could just go to clayshare.com if you're not in the group yet. So awesome. I'm glad you guys made it in and, and hung out with me for this bit of time and saw this fabulous platter. Thanks everybody.